Well, good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to know that our sins are all wiped away because he has died on the cross for us and that we have life eternal because he is risen from the dead. This morning, we are using the order of service of Matins. Uh, so let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn. Oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father. to you, O 
the Lord will come again in glory. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. His praise in the assembly of the godly. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Let the godly exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples.
Old Testament reading for this, the last Sunday of the church year, is from Isaiah chapter 65. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former things shall not be remembered or come into mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem to be a joy, and her people to be a gladness. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and be glad in my people. No more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not fill out his days. For the young man shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be the offspring of the blessed of the Lord and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall graze together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God.
The epistle is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore encourage one another, and build one another up, just as you are doing. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Have our children come forward. They're coming. I watch so I don't lose my page. Good morning. Good morning. So, have you ever heard of the word anticipate? What does it mean? What does it mean? Cora, do you know? Kind of think of what's going to happen next. That's pretty good, yeah. To anticipate means you're going to expect something to happen. Now, let me tell you, how many of you expected snow this morning? Me. You did? Good. <laughs> good, Ryder. All right. I didn't expect that much snow. Me either. Yeah. Me either. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of snow. <laughs> 
That's a lot of snow. Yeah. It's, Guess what? I'm going to put my head in the snow. Yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of playing in the snow this afternoon. Pete? Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you another thing. Are you expecting anything else to come? Not me. Soon. Not me. A bird. A bird? Elf. Huh? A bird. Santa yeah. and elf? Elf. Yeah. It's getting close to elf. what? Elf. Christmas. Christmas, that's right. And children really anticipate Christmas. Sit still now, just a minute, so I can talk. They really anticipate Christmas. They expect it to come. What would happen if it didn't come this year? Would you be upset? Yeah, I'd be upset. Yeah, I imagine you'd be upset. I'd be really mad. Real mad. Well, today in our lessons, Jesus talks about us expecting something to happen, but we don't know exactly when. Now, you know, Christmas comes at December 25th, 24th, 25th. So you have an idea when it's coming, and you can anticipate, expect it to come at that time. Jesus tells us he's coming again, but he doesn't tell us the date he's coming, does he? No. Yeah. no. Now, if I asked you, are you getting ready for Christmas? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. No. Okay. yes. All right. Are you getting ready for Jesus to come back? Yes. No. Yay, all right, that's good. No. Yeah. How do you get ready for that? I know. You decorate your house? No. <laughs> no. How do you get ready for Jesus coming back? I do. You know what? Yeah. You what? You set up the de Christmas decorations? Well, you could, but don't. Don't pull on him. You'll make it tight for me and I can't talk. <laughs> Not really Christmas decorations, but... I can tell you how to get ready for Jesus coming. You're ready. Yeah, you're ready. You're ready. I'm not ready. Yeah, you were baptized. Yeah. And you're here to hear God's word. And that's how you keep ready for Jesus coming, is hearing his word, believing his word, and believing that he's coming again, just like he promised. That's anticipation. All right? Go back to your moms and dads. I'll straighten up. <laughs> Forever, O oh Lord. Your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The zeal and the excitement of new or re renewed faith is always astonishing. The adult convert, brimming with joy and eager to share the faith with those that he's he or she comes into contact. The eager confirmants who are, are dressed to the nines and speaking back to God 
the faith, the words of faith, they have been given to say. The fervent prayers, the faithful attending and receiving of the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Christ, the hearts full of forgiveness of sins, the brilliantly alive feeling of a strong and newly awakened faith, But the night of our earthly journey grows long. The bridegroom tarries in a far off country and eyelids grow heavy. The devil comes with his lullaby of lies. Did God really say you shouldn't gossip? You know, it would just be telling the truth of what he, what he did. Surely, just one look at that woman would be all right. Go ahead and take it. It won't be missed. You deserve it. What that woman did to you is unforgivable and you need to get back at her that wrong that you did is unforgivable and God has turned his back on you this is such soothing music to the ears of the flesh And all have ears for it. In the parable Jesus told today, all ten virgins fell asleep. All are unfaithful. All quit watching for the bridegroom. There is no one righteous. No one seeks after God. All have together gone astray and done their own thing. All are rocked to sleep in the devil's arms as he coos away his lying tomb. Repent and awaken, you zealous confirmands of yesteryear, for the bridegroom may be delayed, but he will come again. And he has never left a single one of his promises undone yet. Repent and take on the wisdom of the wise virgins. For though they have slipped and fallen, though they, like all of us, daily sin much and not off to sleep, have not forgotten why they are there in the wedding hall. They still recall that they are awaiting the bridegroom to come. Their wisdom is faith. And so they had brought extra flask of oil just in case the bridegroom was long in keeping his promise. They knew he would come. They trusted that he would come. And so they were prepared for the long haul. The five foolish virgins, however, are foolish precisely because they lack faith. They didn't trust the promise of the bridegroom. 
He promised to come back and take them to the wedding feast. But then when he tarried, they gave up on him. Their faith sprouted up as fresh and green as that of the five wise virgins. But they had no root. So when everything didn't go as they planned, they grew tired and fell asleep. Just as the wise virgins did. But the foolish virgins fell in a more disastrous way. Because when things didn't go as planned, they not only slept, but they gave up on the bridegroom. They thought, why bring extra oil? He's not even coming. What does it matter what we do? The bridegroom has abandoned us. We might as well get comfortable, hoard our money for something useful, since the bridegroom isn't coming to get us. If he hasn't come by now, he isn't coming. Dear Christians, this race that we run is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Jesus hasn't promised that things will always go our way that you or I will get what we expect and never get any disappointments or surprises? Instead, the Lord promises you that your faith will be tried with hardship and pain in this fallen world so that you might not get too attached to it. For that's the foolishness of the foolish virgins. They lost sight of the promise of the bridegroom and had hope only in the things of this world. But the wise virgins, for all their stumbling and their sleeping, still took the bridegroom at his word. He will return. even if it may be delayed for a little bit. Because his promises never fail. Oh, the devil's a liar. But our Lord is faithful and true. So ignore the soft lullaby of the devil and his lies and instead Listen to the clarion trumpet of our Lord Jesus Christ. For while you have slipped and fallen asleep, there was one who kept vigil over your souls all through the night. Just think, even while the great saints Peter, James, and John slept in that garden of Gethsemane. Jesus kept vigil for you. He prayed for you. He sweat blood for you. He was beaten and scourged and crucified and condemned for you. He didn't grow weary though the road was long. He didn't lose sight of the promise of his father, though the devil was, devil's lies were constantly tempting to, to turn away. When he finally closed his eyes, it wasn't in sleep. It was in death for the sins of all the world, for your sins. The 
Those sins are all now wiped away. Blotted out by the blood of God Almighty. There is now no condemnation for you. You can run your race in the sure knowledge and hope that at the end, there is peace and joy and consolation, not condemnation. And for this race, you will need to be sustained. You will need to have your ears filled with the word of God to drown out the lying voice of the devil. You will need to be refreshed and washed clean in holy baptism and have this baptismal bath renewed in confession and absolution. And most of all, you will need food for the journey. For if you become weak from hunger, you'll fall asleep. But a journey with eternal consequences requires eternal food. And so the Lord Jesus gave you his body and his blood to sustain you. That which purchased your salvation will also strengthen and bring you safely home. For the Lord died and rose again to bring you safely home. He has made you his own, calling you by name, putting his name upon you in holy baptism. And here in the church, he will sustain you on the journey through his word and sacrament. And if it should be his will that he tarry a while longer and you, your eyelids have to close in death, fear not. For as he is awakened from the dead, he will also come to you and say, Beloved, arise. Come into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, which I purchased for you with my own blood. Arise, O sleeper, awake, for the Lord is near. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise and sing our canon.
we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be, all that we have is thine alone. I trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. In our prayers today, we also want to include Karen Myers, the stepmother of Sarah Anderson. O Lord, absolve your people from their offenses, that from the bonds of our sins, which by reason of our frailty we have brought upon ourselves, we may be delivered by your bountiful goodness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, Teach us to number our days and know our frailty. Let us find our hope in Christ alone until we are crowned with joy at his final coming. You have anointed and enlightened us in holy baptism, and you call us always to renew our light by the ministry of your church. Keep us by your word and sacraments until your son ret your returns. You have called us to build and to plant and so cultivate the world by our various vocations. Endow the faithful with your spirit that they may bear rich fruit in their lives and enjoy the work of their hands. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty God, remember the leaders of our country and all who serve in our military especially Nick. Fill them with your wisdom and protect them in every danger. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Gracious Lord, extend your care and blessing to young and old. Guard both infants who have lived but a few days and the elderly living out the rest of their lives. Increase their faith and enrich their lives until they live eternally in you. Be near to the sick and the suffering, especially Barb, Rebecca, Neil, Sean and AJ, Addie, Paulette, Laurie, Dave, Pam, Dana, Dan, Dustin, Steve, Wes, Lois, Jan, Josh, Kenny and Karen. Comfort them with your divine promises and grant your healing according to your will. You are Lord of those who are awake and those who have fallen asleep. You knit us together in the salvation of your son, Jesus Christ. Preserve our hope and teach us to number our days until we enter together into the kingdom of your son. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. 
gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning once again to all of you, and uh, glad you all made it here safely, and pray that you will make it home safely through the snow. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Right after the service today, we're going to start decorating the church. Uh, so any 
hands that can be here to help would be appreciated. Uh, so make note of that. There will be no Sunday school and no Bible study uh, so that this other can get done. Uh, any other announcements that need to be made other than on Tuesday of this week, the community of Wilton has their first Advent community service at noon. It will be here at Zion, uh, and then they have a, a luncheon uh, after that short service. So any of you are welcome to attend and uh, encouraged to attend. May God richly bless each and every one of you.